You're listening to the Future Tech Health Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Until I reached age 40, I never realized the obvious, that we all have medical issues, or we at least have a family member or close relation that had, has, or will have them in the future. Medicine and biological systems are the final frontier. Until we've conquered death, figured out how life began, cured cancer, and understood our purpose in the universe, there's a heck of a lot to talk about when it comes to our health. Future Tech Health means I'll be covering futuristic topics that are actually already in clinical trials or even starting to appear on shelves or by prescription or available for your own use. We dive deep into stem cells, CRISPR-Cas9, the science of sleep, epigenetics, medical testing, cancer, ketogenic diets, stem cells, aging, regenerative medicine, and more. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a serious medical problem. Remember, however, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and share it with friends. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech Health Podcast. I have Adam Lim. Uh, he's a chiropractor in New York City. His website is topchiropractornyc.com. Topchiropractornyc.com. Uh, Dr. Adam Lam. So thanks for coming, Adam. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here today. Yeah, tell me about uh, chiropractic for people that don't know. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of misinformation thinking that you know, chiropractors will break your neck or all kinds of crazy stuff. But you know, what do you encounter um, that people are misinformed about in regards to chiropractic? Sure. So most people go to chiropractors when they have some sort of uh, complaint, when they have an ache or pain, something's bothering them in their neck. Their lower back is bothering them, sciatica, headaches. People come with all sorts of random symptoms. Um, they go to a chiropractor. They, they get adjusted. They get everything put into alignment, and they feel better. But, but that's not really what chiropractic is about. Chiropractic, to me, is all about allowing the body to work the way it was designed to. And if something is out of place in the spine or otherwise, and that's going to affect the ability of the body to work because nerves aren't going to be able to get through those areas that are misaligned properly. So my job is to realign people and just allow the body to work properly and to heal itself. So when you uh, when someone's not aligned, you know, from what I've heard, they call it a subluxation. Yeah. And uh, when you align someone, what are you literally doing? Let's say like uh, I know one of the vertebrae in their spine is misaligned. How would it be misaligned? And what would yeah. you do and what would happen after? So most people could understand what a, what a dislocation is. You know, you know, sometimes they fall and their shoulder gets dislocated. And if that happened, you would not be going to a chiropractor. You'd be going to the emergency room and having it put back into place. But a lot of times shoulders and other joints in the body go out of place a little less than a full dislocation. Another word for dislocation is a luxation and a subluxation is exactly what what it means it's less than a full luxation it's less than a full dislocation and that's really the way that chiropractors help people we see something that is just dislocated or out of alignment a little bit we use our hands to put things back into place as gently as possible and we remove any any interference from the nerve system therefore allowing the body to express itself fully What's the uh, audible sound that some people hear, the crack? What, what is that? Have you, has science yeah. figured out what's going on? Yeah, the, the crack is really just some air that's being released. It comes out of suspension that's in liquid that's in every joint. It's just like opening up a, a can of soda or a beer, and you have that little noise that comes out. If you wanted to test that theory, once somebody has been realigned or adjusted, if you tried to move that same joint again, it wouldn't make another sound for at least about 20 minutes, which is how long it takes for the gas to go back in suspension. And that doesn't mean that you should be getting adjusted every 20 minutes, but you really couldn't make that sound um, in less than 20 minutes. And what causes uh, subluxations? What are some of the major factors that cause it to happen? Everything you do in life can cause a subluxation. Just, just being alive does it. 
the way you sit, the way you stand, the way you sleep, um, what you put in your body can cause subluxations. If you're not putting the right things into your body, and let's say you're doing some damage to an organ, like your stomach, for example, then your stomach sends a signal to the brain. The brain says, oh, there's something fishy going on there. And it further sends back an impulse that causes a muscle to go into spasm. That muscle then pulls on the vertebra in that area. And then the vertebra misaligns so as to put pressure on that nerve and turn down that abnormal signal. It's really pretty simplistic. It's the way, it's the only way the body knows how to get rid of that message. But we know now that by, by moving it properly and getting that pressure off, that's an even better way to allow the body to heal. So what happens if a nerve gets impinged slightly or if it gets impinged majorly? What are the effects or symptoms? Well, nerves in your body usually travel in bundles. And within that bundle, there are different diameter fibers. Some of those fibers carry pain, some of them carry temperature, some of them carry pressure, some of them um, carry motor function to various muscles in your body. So depending on where that bundle of nerves is being compressed and how much of it is being compressed, that can often determine what nerve within that bundle is gonna get affected. And some people might show signs of numbness and tingling, while others might just be complaining of pain, while others might have a loss of function in, in, various, in various body parts. What's, um, how often does the average person need to get adjusted? I know it depends on the person, but average. There's a lot of different factors that, that govern how, how long a person can maintain the correction. But the first thing to consider is how long have you had that misalignment for? And, most people are coming in with misalignments, chronic misalignments that they've had for most of their lives. So if you've been living a certain way in a certain position for, you know, 30, 40 years, then it might take another lifetime, another 30, 40 years to really correct that. It doesn't all, often take that long, but typically when I see a person and I give them a, an adjustment, I give them a correction, I see that most of those corrections usually last about a week or so. So that's why I encourage most of my people to come and get checked on a weekly. Other chiropractors might, might look at that differently. Other chiropractors might see people several days a week. Other chiropractors, depending on their technique, might only see people once a month or even, even less frequently. Well, what happens uh, on your first adjustment? Uh, first adjustment, um, what will people typically report feeling? And after they've come for a while, let's say you know for months, and they're getting adjusted regularly, what's the difference? What do they tell you? Sure. So most people coming in, getting their first adjustment, are going to feel better. They're going to feel noticeably better, right, right then and there, um, in the office. Did the adjustment? They get up off the table, like. Oh, wow, that feels good. I can move better. Some people say they can breathe better, but some people don't. Some people get an adjustment and they're sore. Some people feel worse after their first adjustment or two. And it's kind of like going to the gym and doing an exercise that maybe you've never done before, or maybe you haven't done in a long time, and you're moving parts of your body in ways that you're not used to. So a lot of times you can be a little sore after that. So typically... After I see someone for the first time, I don't ask them right then and there how they feel. I'm more interested in how they feel the next day or in a few days. So when I do see that person for the first time, I like to have them come back soon, within a few days or so, to give me some feedback to see what they're up to, reassess their whole spine and body, and see if move things properly, if we need to do more of the same, Maybe we need to do some different things and make sure that they're not going to be sore on future visits. Um, do people, you see they resist wanting to come back? Do they feel like it should be one and done? Or is that not really a consideration? Like what goes on in people's minds, you think, when you adjust them the first time? Sure. Well, you know, a lot of people have, uh, have told me that <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sometimes I'm too good at my job. Chiropractors can often pe be too good in that a person comes in and in some sort of uh, distress, they get adjusted and their symptoms go away, they feel better. And most of the time when people's symptoms go away, they think they're, they're good, they're done. But, uh, but 
just getting someone out of pain doesn't mean that they're they're all better and that uh, and that those misalignments aren't going to come right back. So it's really not a, a one-time thing. To really get the most out of chiropractic, it's more of a, a maintenance thing. It's more of just getting checked on a regular basis to make sure that your body is able to deal with the stresses of life. Do you see that people want to come see you or that they're afraid to come see you and they feel like they have to come see you? Like, what's the perception of seeing you versus like a regular doctor? Um, I mean, a lot of people want to go see chiropractors instead of medical doctors. They they want a healthier approach toward, towards things. And then there's a whole other group of people that go to chiropractors as a last resort after having gone to their, their medical doctor and trying drugs and all sorts of other treatments and therapies, going to physical therapy. And then they finally go to a chiropractor who does a really simple um, adjustment and lo and behold, their body starts working better. Um, people people want to do the one and done thing. And I'm not forcing people. I'm not calling people. I don't send postcards and, and beg people to come back to see me. My job as a doctor is to educate people. And I educate my people. And if they want to take advantage of what I have to offer, great. I'm here for them. But I'm not here to force anyone to something that they don't want to do yeah i mean just personally my experience is that i want to go to the chiropractor because i always feel better after the regular doctor i don't want to go because it just seems like it always would be negative news but the chiropractor right. I, mean, I have a different mindset it's a positive so right. i just wonder hopefully that a lot of your patients feel the same way they feel positive about it they look forward to it the massage sure i mean part of the whole experience is to is to keep people being positive and to give people hope and I think a lot of people go to medical doctors and, you know, medical doctors come from a place of fear. They use scare tactics to, to get people to do what they say. And I, I, don't, I don't like that kind of practice. I'm, I'm all about giving people hope, keeping people positive, and keeping people healthy. Are there um, particular techniques that you like? You know, I've seen like the activator. It sounds like a little typewriter. It goes, psh, psh, psh. And sure. Some, some doctors just use that. and. You know, I guess there's various ways to manually adjust, but any that come to mind that you like and why? Sure. So the word chiropractic comes from Greek meaning to use your hands. And so to me, true chiropractic is about using your hands, putting your hands on people, using your hands to realign things, move things, that kind of stuff. But I also, I also use a number of different modalities, a number of machines in the office some things to help break up scar tissue, muscle spasm, some things to stimulate cells in the body called proprioceptors to help the body hold those adjustments even longer. And, um, and I have no problem using all sorts of different modalities like lasers and ultrasound and things that physical therapists use and doing massage and all these things. The important thing is that chiropractic is about using your hands, moving joints in the body, and getting them in proper alignment to allow the full expression of the nerves in the body. That's chiropractic, and that's it. All those other things are cool, and I like to use all those other things, the activator, as you mentioned, and you know those blah, 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 blah kind of activators, these like all, all these cool machines that a lot of personal trainers are using these days. They're all cool, as long as you can differentiate the the chiropractic adjustment from all those other fun things. Yeah. Does the profession have um, a lot new going on or has it been just, you know, it works and it's been static for a long time? Like what's your overall view of the field? Well, I think there, there's a huge, um, there's a huge rift within the chiropractic profession. Chiropractors have always been known as, as being different. If you looked at a hundred different chiropractors, they'd all practice a hundred different ways, more or less, um, using different techniques and modalities. But the big thing these days is that there are a lot of new chiropractors coming out of school, and what they really want is they want to be on par like medical doctors. They want to be accepted as medical doctors. They want to, um, you know, prove that, uh, that they're, they're not over- treating people, over-adjusting. They want to be able to diagnose various conditions. 
And even though all chiropractors are required to diagnose things, at least for insurance companies, um, you know, again, the real point of chiropractic is to allow the body to work better. And, you know, I think chiropractors should be different than all the other health professions. And that's, that's why we're chiropractors. If you, if you want to do things like a medical doctor or like a physical therapist, then go to physical therapy school, go to medical school, but don't even call yourself a chiropractor. That's my opinion. What's, um, I mean, do you see the profession changing in uh, a certain way because of the desire of new chiropractors? I mean, is it, or is it really going to stay how it is? Like what, you know, what's new besides this perception? Yeah. I think there's always going to be two categories. There's going to be the, the chiropractors that, that believe in health and wellness and then the chiropractors that are just, the, just here to treat pain and symptoms and, and again, be more like a physical therapist. So I, I think there's, there's, we'll hopefully maintain that thanks to, thanks to the, the old school chiropractors like myself. But we're always learning new stuff as well. And I'm always going to new seminars, always learning new, new things about chiropractic and new techniques, new modalities, learning things about nutrition and just healthy living, things that I can pass on to my patients to help them lead happier, healthier lives. Do you see that the patients are changing at all? I mean, like, like how long have you been a chiropractor and uh, how I've, long have you been seeing patients? Yeah, I've been, I've been doing this for um, 18 years, almost okay. 19 years now. And uh, the thing that we see now is thanks to, thanks to the internet, thanks to Google, um, people, patients know more about themselves than most of their doctors. And I love that. And I, I love that people are researching everything, every word that a doctor tells them, which they should. I tell my people all day long, don't believe me. Don't believe what I say. Go check it out for yourself. Um, the real thing that we can offer people that nobody else can is the adjustment. You can't get an adjustment on Google. You know, you can you can look up all sorts of facts, but you need to get face to face with a chiropractor and uh, and get the physical aspect of it. Mm. Yeah, what, what is a what's an osteopath versus what you do? Do they do adjustments, and how are they different? Yeah. So osteopaths do lots of manipulations of the joints in the body, and uh, a lot of chiropractors have learned osteopathic techniques, and I, and I love a lot of osteopathic techniques. The, the formation of chiropractic came about, it had some roots in osteopathy, but the, one of the biggest differences is that osteopaths move things just for the sake of moving things, and the point is they really want to allow for normal blood flow through the body, blood and lymph, whereas chiropractors are more concerned with nerve flow. It just so happens that nerves and blood vessels and lymphatic drainage, lymphatic system all runs in the same general directions and areas, but chiropractors are more concerned about the brain and the nervous system than osteopaths. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. Chiropractic also happens to be more specific than osteopathy, whereas osteopathy will sometimes use some long lever adjustments. Chiropractors get in and do very specific shorter lever adjustments. I know that's a little confusing, but it's, it's just more specific than just moving things for the heck of it. And do you, uh, you work on, I guess, men and women? Do you work on kids? Is there an age at which uh, it'll be okay to work on kids? Sure. So I, I see a lot of pregnant women, and I, I offer them to check their, their newborns. I've, I've seen a lot of newborns, sometimes in the hospital, sometimes as soon as they're home. Uh, with a newborn in a normal delivery, it's really important just to check the tops of their necks and make sure that's all in the right place so that they can develop properly. But the, the adjustment, and I and I say adjustment with quotation marks, it's a really, really simple, gentle thing that's not at all like someone would imagine a normal uh, adult would be adjusted. And then right. outside of, yeah, and, and outside of the newborns, I see children of all ages. And it's as they develop, as their body 
grows and matures, we're able to move things in different ways. We're able to do different types of adjustments with them. Okay. Yeah, I've seen, uh, <clears throat> you know, like teenagers and kids of the chiropractor, and it seems like when they get adjusted, it's like the chiropractor gave them sugar. They have all this energy and they go crazy and, you know. Yeah, they, yeah. They seem I mean, to respond to it really well. Yeah, I mean, that's really the power of chiropractic. It's not not all about getting somebody out of pain. It's about giving them more energy and vitality and just allowing their body to express itself fully. And you see, any, it just, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Any, any contraindications? Like, is it, is there a point where someone's too old or too frail to get this help or you can just modify the, you know, the strength by which you do things and everyone can benefit? Yeah. So truthfully, ev- everyone can benefit from it. And there are some people that are so arthritic or locked up that, you know, a, a real forceful adjustment would be contraindicated. So we wouldn't do that stuff. And that's where modalities like the activator comes into play, where we can we can do things a lot gentler. Um, I see lots of elderly people, lots of, lots of osteoporotic people that you've got to really be careful with. Lots of people with, um, you know, vascular issues, you know, people who are uh, in danger of, of getting a stroke. And you got to be really careful with their necks. Uh, a lot of people who might have heart conditions, who might have had heart conditions for decades, might have things like a, an, an abdominal aortic aneurysm. And we need to be really careful about adjusting even just the middle of their, their backs. And, uh, mm. but it's, but it's all, it's all through modifications that we can, we can help everyone. All right. Excellent. Um, so Adam, what's the best way for people to find out more? And if they're in, uh, you serve what Manhattan or like what, what range area do you serve? Yep. I am, I am in Manhattan. So because I'm in Manhattan and right in the center of it all, right by Grand Central Station, I get people from all over New York. I get people from, um, Westchester in Connecticut, who, who take Metro North in. I get people from Jersey and uh, from all, all the boroughs. And I also get a lot of a lot of travelers, international travelers that are just passing through New York and just want to get a good adjustment. I need to have you set up a booth right next to like the, the hot and crusty, you know, right there in Penn Station. <laughs> get a lot of people coming. In. Totally. <laughs> well, excellent. So, so people could also go to your website. It's what, topchiropractornyc.com? Yep, you can also get there by going to lambchiropractic.com. Either way, it takes you to the same place. Okay. All right, Adam. Well, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Richard. You have a great day. You're listening to the Future Tech Health Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Until I reached age 40, I never realized the obvious, that we all have medical issues, or we at least have a family member or close relation that had, has, or will have them in the future. Medicine and biological systems are the final frontier. Until we've conquered death, figured out how life began, cured cancer, and understood our purpose in the universe, there's a heck of a lot to talk about when it comes to our health. Future Tech Health means I'll be covering futuristic topics that are actually already in clinical trials, or even starting to appear on shelves, or by prescription, or available for your own use. We dive deep into stem cells, CRISPR-Cas9, the science of sleep, epigenetics, medical testing, cancer, ketogenic diets, stem cells, aging, regenerative medicine, and more. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a serious medical problem. Remember, however, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoy the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and share it with friends. Thank you.